As a young Air Force pilot, I was selected to fly the A-10 Warthog. The A-10 is a single-seat attack aircraft, and its primary role is to provide lethal support to our troops on the ground. If our soldiers find themselves under attack and they need help, who do they call in? The A-10s. It carries a multitude of weapons, bombs, missiles, rockets, heck, the entire aircraft was built around a 20-foot Gatlin gun that holds 1,150 30-millimeter rounds. And the cockpit sits in a titanium tub to protect the pilot from enemy fire. Courage was pretty much a requirement for the job, and I had it. Up in the air, no problem, but on the ground, that was a different story. I struggled to find my voice. I hesitated to ask questions or share my ideas, thinking, is this something I should already know? Are they gonna criticize me and rip me apart like they did the last guy? Or I don't wanna highlight myself. I already stand out enough. And I felt ashamed of this. I internally battled with it almost every day. And yet, nobody knew. I saw it as pure weakness. And there is no room for weakness as a fighter pilot. How could I be so courageous and yet such a coward at the same time? A few years later, in a completely different squadron, I realized I wasn't fighting that battle anymore. I had found my voice. I was the chief instructor pilot in the squadron, head of weapons and tactics for combat operations, and I had graduated from one of the most prestigious training programs in the military, U.S. Air Force Weapons School. And it was there that I realized that risk assessment isn't just something we do for mission planning and execution. It is something we all do all the time. We are constantly assessing the risk in social situations. And because everybody has a different level of social risk tolerance, some people don't even realize they do it, while others are well aware of the process. Professionally, I had seen so many people harshly ridiculed for pretty minor things. I had defaulted to an ultra-conservative social risk tolerance at work. So what was different now? Why was I willing to take more social risk? It was the environment. Harsh criticism and instant dismissal were not default reactions. So I shared my ideas and I asked my questions. The world is screaming at us to step out of our comfort zones. And that advice is spot on. But people will still naturally do social risk assessment. What if, while we continue to encourage people to be bold, we also help them by changing our environments and making them more friendly to questions and new ideas? If we create environments that foster social courage, people will feel more valued, seen, heard, and appreciated. We will see an increase in productivity, innovation, and overall workplace satisfaction. Are you socially courageous enough to lead the change 